how much will the average family see their monthly mortgage payments go up over the next three years? Austerity is not the answer. Austerity is what, exactly what Canadians are feeling in their household budgets right. today. His pursuit of ideological gains uh, is uh, hurting Canadians. For families on a stretch budget, this means a lot more pain. The global inflation crisis uh, that faces Canadians and people around the world has global roots. All of that is about what happened today. The Bank of Canada announced a decision to hike its key lending rate to 4.75%, the highest it's been in 22 years, and also marking the ninth rate hike since March of last year. It is being done, of course, in an effort to rein in inflation, but that did not stop uh, the politics of it all from uh, happening as well, to weigh in on the political consequences of those rising rates. Let's bring in the front bench panel. With me this evening, former Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil. He's now a strategic business advisor for the law firm Cox and Palmer in Halifax, former Alberta MLA and cabinet minister Gary Marr. He's the president and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. Former Ontario NDP MPP Gratan Singh is here. He's now vice president at Crestview Strategy and also we always like to disclose the brother of federal NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. And CTV National News' Ottawa Bureau Chief Joyce Napier rounds out our panel this evening. Hi everybody. Uh, Stephen, I'll start with you because I'm not sure if you're, I'm sure you're glued to TV today, but your name was invoked when Pierre Polio addressed the uh, addressed his caucus this morning on this very issue he cited you uh, in, in two days ago he cited John Manley as two liberals who actually thought that governments contribute to uh, the, making the, the Bank of Canada's job a, a little bit harder when you look at the political back and forth today do you think any of it resonates with Canadians and if some of it does what is it well first of all I think uh, uh, most of us wouldn't be surprised with the increase in the interest rate today based on what we were hearing coming out of the central bank and what we were seeing with inflation that was going up. I think one of the things that should really start concerning us is that many of the mortgages that Canadians have have been based on a stress test that was around 5 5.5% uh, mortgage rate. We're getting pretty close to that. Uh, I'm concerned about that. I did. Uh, my phone did light up today when I hear I was being uh, referenced by the leader of the opposition. Uh, he left out an important part where I was referring to governments across the country. And it's not that I don't believe they should be putting money into the economy, but I think they should be strategically investing on how do we make sure we're, whatever the investment is can grow economically, and what are we doing with the housing crisis? Because one of the things that really stands in front of us right now is supply. It's not a question about... Uh, the fact that the, you know people don't want to buy in the market, the interest rates where they are, it's simply supply. And how do we deal with supply? And if if I was still in government, which I'm not, and at all levels of government, I think if the, the pol public policy positions they can make to help improve the outcome for Canadians would be how do we improve the supply over the next number of years? Because it's not going to be an instant fix. It will require public policy that deals with supply. And I believe will bring down interest rates not to where they were over the last decade, but bring them down to what is a, what is a respectable level, and and will happen over a period of time where we can manage it. Uh, but there is no short-term fix. Uh, and I will say this to you: it is liberal and conservative governments all across the country that are overspending. Uh, Gratan, I think that's a, a fair point that Stephen makes around housing policy and the supply of housing and its impact on uh, basically, you know, people need huge mortgages because there's a shortage of supply and when interest rates go up this much, that's why it, it, it ends up hurting them so much. At the same time, it's a, it's a valid public policy debate and conversation to have. It didn't factor into the debate today. It was a highly political debate about really who's to blame and to what degree and is it worse in other places and should that comfort us? What do you think Canadians took away from the political kind of uh, you know, discussion around or debate around this very real issue to them? Well, the reality is that irrespective of the debate, a rise in interest rates is going to make Canadians hurt. Uh, we just discussed, uh, I think a week ago or two weeks ago, the fact that Canada has the highest household debt out of all G7 nations and an increase yeah. In interest like this is ultimately going to put Canadians in a more desperate position. We already know that people are living really, truly hand to mouth right now. And this issue doesn't address the vast array of uh, affordability issues that Canadians are facing right now, be it at the grocery store or be it at life that's overall becoming more unaffordable. And we need to make sure that government is taking an approach that encompasses these kinds of, 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 of policies that helps make life more affordable for Canadians. So, you know, this debate, I think, 
is an important one, but if we look at the reality of it, Canadians are struggling, and this increase in interest is going to make them struggle further, and I think that's a bad decision. The trouble for the government and for policymakers, Joyce, is that if they do do a lot to help people who are hurting, which, you know, they're hurting a lot, a lot on the lower income side, but everybody is really struggling with this cost of living issue. If they do a lot, they risk making things even worse, which, of course, also from a political perspective, feeds into exactly what the conservatives are criticizing them for. And, and you know, they're in a funny kind of bind, because if you hear, listen to Christian Freeland today, the finance minister, she says, you know, the Canadian economy is strong and resilient. More Canadians have good jobs today. Yay. That's exactly what the Bank of Canada doesn't want to hear. Uh, that's why they're fighting inflation. Look, they went from eight, the in, inflation has gone from eight and something to four. And, and that already hurt a lot of Canadians. But it has to go down to two. So, you know, the pain is not stopping here today with this increase. There will be more increases. And there's nothing the government can do. Uh, they have to continue helping those people who are really struggling, and they are, right? They have to be targeted help, but it has to be more and more targeted or else they do contribute to inflation. And, you know, those inflationary factors are not only Canadian-made. So it's not only this, the spending of governments. Of course, it contributes to it. But what contributes to it is external factors, global factors. So how do you combat those and is increasing is is taking a you know grand old tradition of increasing the rate that the bank is doing to fight this kind of inflation is it the right weapon that also is another mm -hmm. question so are these people going to be hurting for nothing that's the question I'm asking myself because this is a different kind of inflation that is created by factors that you know the Trudeau government doesn't control, nor any other government controls. So it, it is a weird situation where our economy is growing, actually more than the bank would have liked to see. People are buying houses more than the bank wants to see. So, and the job market is hot. So everything is hot and inflation is still too high. And he has to keep beating on that and, you know, beating on homeowners and on struggling Canadians. It's a, it's a lose-lose well, for a it, government. Yeah, and it, it, I think Joyce puts it perfectly, Gary, because it's, it's an extraordinary situation in which you think you could come out and say, look at the level of employment in this country. Look at the economic growth that's happening. We'd let, you know, let us take credit for that. But at the same time, the, the medicine for that is extraordinarily punitive right now. I think that's how Canadians feel, right? This interest rate hike today, as Groton pointed out, is painful for Canadians. So how do you navigate that um, a, a, as a government? Um, and do you think they're doing a, a good job, good or bad job of it? Well, let me say, first of all, I'm sure that the governor of the Bank of Canada would like me to sell T-shirts that say, make monetary policy boring again. And, and I think Joyce actually <laughs> raises a really interesting point because is this the right tool uh, to reducing inflation? But it's really the only tool that the Bank of Canada has. Mm -hmm. And their, their mandate is to get inflation down to 2%. But if you've only got one tool, that's what you're going to use. Is it the right tool? I think Joyce raises a, uh, an interesting question as to maybe there's other things that should be done. But uh, to you know what others have said, uh, inflation is making Canadians feel like they're not getting ahead. Um, and if the only tool you have is to raise interest rates, then if, you've, if you're uh, among the many Canadians that's increased their mortgage, uh, you're also going to feel like you're not getting ahead. It's a very, very difficult uh, problem to solve, and there's a lot of factors to it. Stephen talked about housing. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a precarious situation that Canada's in right now. Okay, I have to leave the discussion there. Thank you much. Thank you very much, everybody. Nice to see you as always. Stephen McNeil, Gary Marr, Garatan Singh, and Joyce.